Your doctor has recommended that you undergo knee replacement surgery. But what does that actually mean? The knee is one of the most complex and one of the most important joints in your body. Let's take a look at the way the knee joint works. The knee is made up of four bones. The femur, the large bone in your thigh, attaches by ligaments to your tibia. Just below and next to the tibia is the fibula, which runs parallel to the tibia. The patella, or what we call the knee cap, rides on the knee joint as the knee bends. When your knee becomes diseased due to arthritis or other injury, the bones rub together, causing pain, even restricting the ability to walk. No matter what the cause, one of the most effective ways to fix a damaged knee is to replace it surgically. In this procedure, the ends of the femur, tibia, and patella are replaced with a metal joint, which restores freedom of movement. Knee surgery is a major operation, but your doctor believes that the procedure, followed up with physical therapy and time to heal, will result in reduced pain and greater mobility. After you are unconscious, the doctor will make a vertical incision in your leg above your knee. Using retractors to pull back the skin, the surgeon will make a second incision in the muscle in order to expose the damaged knee joint. Next, your doctor will remove the patella or kneecap and flex your leg to expose the surface of the joint. Preparing the surface of the joint involves removing the damaged or diseased parts of the bone and then cutting and shaping the surface to allow the best fit possible for the artificial joint. Once your doctor is satisfied with this preparation, the team will drill holes in the tibia and femur. They will also prepare the inside surface of the kneecap and then coat the bony surface with a special cement. The metal pieces of the new joint are then installed on the tibia and femur. As well as the kneecap pad. Finally, your doctor places a spacer on the tibia surface. After a final check to make sure all components fit, and that the leg can move freely. The muscle and other tissues are closed with sutures. To aid in healing, your knee may be stabilized with a brace and you will be encouraged to use crutches during the recovery process. Germs are present always on your hands, and they can be transferred to other parts of your own body, to the family member for whom you're caring, your patient, and to any clean object you touch. By washing your hands correctly, you remove germs from your hands. Hand washing is the single most important way you can prevent infection from occurring and prevent the spread of infection. You must carefully wash and dry your hands before and after each time you care for your family member, your patient. Before and after you handle your patients and your own food and drink. Before and after you manipulate any contact lenses. Before you apply and after you remove gloves. After you use the toilet. After you cough, sneeze or blow your nose. After contact with anything that could be soiled or have germs on it. After you pick up any object from the floor. 
Hand washing takes a minimum of 10 to 15 seconds, longer if your hands are soiled. The longer you wash, the more germs are removed. The friction generated by rubbing your hands together removes the germs from your skin and running water can then wash them away. Every time you wash your hands, take your time and don't rush. Do the hand washing carefully and thoroughly. Use liquid soap from a dispenser. Bar soap holds germs on its surface. Make sure you have paper towels and a waste receptacle nearby. Remove all jewelry from your hand except a wedding band and push your watch and sleeves up away from your hands. Turn on warm water. Point your fingers down to prevent water running onto your arms and wet your hands. Apply soap from the dispenser. Point your fingers down and rub your hands vigorously together in a circular motion. Start counting seconds at this point. Intertwine your fingers to clean all surfaces of the fingers. Rub your fingernails against the palm of the other hand to get soap under the tips of the nails. If your nails are soiled, clean under them with an orange stick or brush. Keep your hands down and continue to rub them together in a circular motion until the end of your count for 15 seconds. Keep your hands down and rinse them from the wrist to fingertips. Pick up a clean paper towel and turn off the water, still keeping your hands pointed down. Discard the paper towel into the waste receptacle. Pick up another clean paper towel and carefully and completely dry your hands. Discard the paper towel into a waste receptacle. The key points to remember are that friction is critical for removing germs and the friction should be applied for at least 15 seconds. Always keep your fingers pointed down and turn off the water with a paper towel. The supplies you will need to have easily accessible in the bathroom include clean clothing, skid-proof plastic bath mat, two washcloths, two towels, soap, shampoo, plastic pitcher, skin lotion, comb and brush, disposable gloves, and a sealable plastic storage bag. Ensure that the bathroom is pleasantly warm, around 70 degrees. Place the skid-proof plastic bath mat in the tub and fill one-third of the tub with warm water. Test the temperature of the water with your hand. Wash and carefully dry your hands. Put on your disposable gloves. Help your patient undress and place soiled clothing in the plastic bag in the laundry hamper. Help your patient sit on the edge of the tub. If there's a grab bar on the back wall of the tub, have the patient hold it with one hand. Swivel and lift both legs into the tub. From the back, support your patient under both arms and help him slowly lower his body into the water. Encourage your patient's independence 
and have him do as much of the washing as possible. You may need to assist in such areas as the patient's back and to rinse off all soap with the shower extension or a pitcher. If it's shampoo time and the patient cannot do it himself, you can have him hold a dry folded washcloth over his eyes to protect them. Pour clean warm water over the patient's head using a pitcher or shower extension. Rub in shampoo and massage the patient's head. Rinse off the shampoo with clean warm water using a pitcher or a shower extension. Dry the hair. If possible, have the patient stand and help him dry his upper body. Otherwise, dry his upper body and arms with him sitting in the tub. Let the water out of the tub. With a towel over his upper body, help the patient sit on the edge of the tub. Support the patient and help him swivel his legs over the edge of the tub. He can rest for a while if need be. Help dry the rest of the body, paying attention to under the arms, other skin creases and in between the toes. Apply body lotion to the skin and help the patient dress. After making your patient comfortable, return to the bathroom. Place soiled towels and washcloths in the laundry bag. Clean the tub and mop the floor. Remove your gloves, discard them into the plastic storage bag, seal the bag and place it in the trash. Carefully wash and dry your hands.